Hey everyone, and welcome back to another GT scale modeling. Uh, this is going to be a uh, tutorial or a brief how to on how I paint the British MTP camel pattern onto a 135th scale figure. Hopefully, this will be useful to somebody. It's just how I do it. There may be other guys out there that show it differently, um, but this is just the way that I found that at this scale you get something that looks somewhat like what the uh, real life pattern is. Uh, so this is the figure we're going to start with. Um, he's base coated in Vallejo Model Air 71023 Hemp or Camel Beige. That's the base colour we're going to use um, for these figures. So moving on, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint his boots. We're going to use US Field Drab. Paint the boots here. Uh, just a quick base coat. I don't do anything overly fancy, I don't go starting to sort of highlight all the individual little nooks and crannies of these things. Uh, these figures are for a diorama, so the boots will end up getting sort of dust pigments over them and things anyway. So. so that's what we're doing here, we're just layering that up. So there's no background music, this is the first time I've done any of these kind of voiceover videos, so we're seeing how it goes. So there may be some little periods of, of silence, uh, my video editing is not great uh, and I don't find it very easy to split and chop up bits of music to come in when talking stops and things so if we get any periods of silence I do apologise but hopefully you can see what's going on, literally just painting in the boots, nothing terribly difficult about that. Probably could have sped this bit up, but we're almost finished with the boots. Okay, so that's us done with the boots. What we're going to do now is we're going to move on and we're going to base coat his gloves with Vallejo model colour khaki. It's a Flames of War bottle, but it's just fully a model colour. The number is still correct, and we're going to just base coat in his gloves. Again, not overly interesting. Just painting gloves. You may notice that the skin has already been done. This is not a skin tutorial. This is just a, how I did the camouflage and other bits of the model. The... Uh, yeah, as it, the skin's already been done. The helmet's going to cover up a lot of his head, which is why it's flat, anyway, because the helmet goes on. And the uh, figure also has some sunglasses to go on as well, so... I didn't bother painting the eyes or anything. The only bit of skin you're going to see is his neck and nose and mouth. He's got a chin strap on and a radio um, headset on one side of his head as well. So once these are done, we're going to be moving on to the first bit of the camouflage. This camouflage is made up of this base, sort of tan khaki kind of colour. A green, a brown, a dark green, and then a, a light sand colour. Um, well, never. I'll never be able to replicate the real thing exactly because the actual colours are very grade, graded on the real thing, and they're not solid blocks of colour. A lot of them have got a gradient to them, which I, which is pretty hard to paint uh, for me anyway. So we're going to use US dark green, Leo model colour again to do the green spot. He's just referencing back to this other figure I've done here, so we can see what the final effect is looking like. So we're going to build it up in layers. Starting with the green. Uh, plenty of references online uh, for MTP, uh, the multi terrain pattern. Um, I'm quite lucky in that the trouser I scuff about the house in is a pair of MTP trousers, so my reference is looking down at my own legs for this, which is quite handy. Um, the ones I've got on are pretty faded. Um, the models here would potentially sort of represent a, a slightly newer set of clothing that's not so used and so faded. 
So just random, random blotches, some big, some small. Uh, some of the patterns are almost sort of straight, sort of blotchy lines, so sort of feathered edges and things. So uh, I tend to kind of use slightly different thicknesses of paint. Um, that helps give a slight impression of the gradient of colour that's found on the real thing. Because um, you get some bits that end up a little bit more transparent than other bits, but again, it gets covered up by the other colours and at the distance people are looking at it, it's not really the end of the world, so I don't worry too much about it. We're just getting these random kind of patches of green put on. And I think if I remember rightly, I did actually split this bit up, so in a second we'll have a bit where it goes a little faster, although my video editor only seems to allow me to do two times speed, so it's a bit faster, but not much. And we'll just show you up to, uh, there we go, and I'll just show you up doing the, the trousers here. The rest of the model is done in exactly the same way, but I'll not bore you with that. One thing I would say is things like pockets and pouches, they're all made from separate pieces of material stitched together, so just make sure that none of your camel pattern bits cross over any of these joins because, um, you know, the, the camel pattern is not matched up exactly across seams and, and things on the clothing, so that helps just to differentiate between the different pieces when effectively you've got something painted the entire same way. So that's the green all done as you can see all over the entire model just kind of nice big bits it's hard to tell but I did go back just with a slightly thinner paint and uh, helped kind of gradient in. Now we're going to do the brown we're going to use Japanese self-defense force brown mod layer so this one just thinned a little bit and we're going to do the exact same thing with the brown um, obviously covering, covering up a little bit more of the base beige color but it can go over the top of some of the green bits, that's not a problem at all. And same thing, I'll just show you doing the trousers here, and then I'll, off camera, I'll go and do the rest of it. Hopefully, uh, if I do some more of these kind of videos in the future, I'll have figured out how to add some music into the bits so you don't have to listen to me talking all the time or silence but I have to edit these on my phone um, and the iMovie app on my phone is a bit limited to what I can do and then we're gonna speed this a little bit up just to the end of here Don't be too confused with um, if you find any other guys that you've been looking at or you find pictures of multicam online. Multicam and NTP are different, but they are very, very similar. Um, so to most people, they, they are the same and the technique for painting each of them would be the same. Um, I think that just the shades are slightly different to use. Um, and just a quick 360 just to show you the green and the brown all over. Okay, so back to our reference figure. We're going to do the dark brown bits. Now you might not be see this so well, they're pretty small. Just very small sort of dots and squiggles and little sort of straight lines, just small patterns. And we're going to use German Camel Black Brown for that. Um, so you'll probably want to take a smaller brush for this point. We're going to just use, you know, the tip of the brush and we're just doing very small, fine little lines, little splotches, little dots even. Again, Feel free to go over the top of the other bits of the camouflage pattern. Um, I feel it's this stage and the next stage that really starts to make this look more like MTP than it currently does. Especially when we add the light sand colour in a little bit. I feel that that's what really what brings it together and makes it pop and oops, start to become recognisable as that pattern. Again, believe it or not, this bit is sped up two times, but for uh, 
I don't know why the app doesn't let you to speed up any more than that. I would have sped up more than that because it's just applying little dots. But hopefully you'll get the idea. And again, I won't show you all of it, just finishing off some bits of the trousers. And you can see just, it's, again, it's camouflage, it's random. It's, I, mean, I don't know if in real life the um, material is printed, you know, with a a repeating pattern at some at some point but on a model this size don't don't worry about it if you but again you don't want it to look too uniform. I've gone for quite a lot of these little brown spots. Spots and flecks and little things. And again, just to show you that I did do the rest of it. Pouches, body armor, arms. Oh no, I got that. Okay, and then the last color that we're gonna apply to the is um, these light colored spots that are here. And these are put on in the same way, same kind of shapes and patterns as we did for the black and brown, but we used dark sand here. The exact colors for these, these are just what I use because it's what I have. Um, I believe some companies are doing sets. Ammo maybe MIG do maybe now do a set for MTP, but um, you know it's entirely your choice. Uh, these are just what I have, and I find that they're fairly close. And as I said, when you kind of hold them up against the trousers I'm wearing, then gives an idea what they look like. Same thing. Then the little spots, squiggles, and I'm not really doing patches. I'm doing little squiggles and dots and things all over. This bit's now sped up so I found as well, and I guess it depends on your style of painting, but personally I you know, I make sure that the colours go down into the folds on the material. I don't do anything really about picking out those folds because I just find that by doing that you're covering up the camouflage pattern there to highlight a fold and then it detracts from the fact that it's painted in a camouflage pattern. I just personally find that more realistic. Yep, quick 360 again. That's finished. Okay, so what I did off camera is I just painted, I'm trying to indicate here, the small details. There's a carabiner, the top of the radio, the belt, the knee pads. Um, here, I just went and painted those in, and the headset there. Painted those details. Now we're going to take uh, some Citadel shade. I'm going to use the black one, the non-oil. Any black wash, oil or acrylic would do for this. It's just what I happen to have. Basically, I'm just going to take a bit of it and thin it down quite a bit. Um, excuse the hands here, I wasn't actually quite ready for this. Um, so I'm just going to water it down. I don't want I don't want uh, a heavy wash on here. I'm not trying to change the tone of the, the colour. These acrylic washes will often change the tone of things. So it's a bit heavy there. You can just see it. Sorry, I didn't realise this was off camera. But what you can't see is I put it on and I realised it was too heavy. So I watered it down a bit. I do realise... <laughs> in a few seconds that this is not on the camera by the way so I do apologize for this but basically I'm just I'm effectively kind of just putting it all over the model but making sure it doesn't pull anywhere too much it's nice and thin and that it's not going to change the tone of any of the main pieces of the, the model what we're looking for is to use this to just settle into all the little recesses mainly things like the, the you know where um, pouches join where um, arms meet the body armor where the pack the pockets on the sleeves for example just to give a little bit of definition to um, the the model because actually at the moment it's not getting any definition because it's all the same thing and obviously being camouflaged it all blends into one but ultimately as a model we want to be able to see that it is made up of different parts it does have different sections to it so I'm not letting it pull anywhere right down over the boots and everything and it's just going to be enough to give everything a little bit of a definition uh, so that we can actually start to see the details of the model. 
again I said this this steps entirely your choice I used just thin down black wash you could use a thin down brown wash probably you could use oil wash for this if you really wanted to you could use any other acrylic wash it's just the principles the same as to bring that bring out that bit of definition in the model put a little bit of shadows in places where there is going to be some shadows underneath pouches where the arms go into the body armor because in real life they are separate separate parts so it's just very light wash Just doing up around here, around the neck, and then you get a bit of shadow where the neck goes down to the collar. A little bit of definition where the helmet straps meet the face, just so they look a little bit more separate. So you can see here in this bed, I bet, you know, not being too delicate about it, just making sure it doesn't pool anywhere more than anything. Don't want any big black spots where there shouldn't be. Even just went back over the face again. Okay, so that's that. So, just a comparison back to the other figures. So you can see the uniforms are hopefully pretty similar now. Um, I actually don't think the one I was doing turned out quite so well, but it's good enough and I'm happy enough. It's not too bad. So, uh, once the wash dries, what I'll probably do is I'll just very, very lightly in some places take some of the hemp colour that was the base colour and just give a little dry brush, maybe just down the back of the body armour, which is where the all the strapping on his vest is pouch lids just helps to give it another little layer of definition but without abstracting too much from it. The model then get a matte coat and that's the end of that so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.